don't know, they make the shops down there, like these cuffs. But no one, no one like us goes to the cuffs, like mm, plenty of people go to normal cuffs. Most of us are all cops So really, I don't see the point in having to push this from down here. Because it's the the market, which is where the cotton will pull up. It's like a pro proper posh cat, like they get like little silver tables, little silver chairs, silver cups, and we get all the white cups. Oh, we had some great memories because there was a park, and when you play, you had your secret areas, and you and your friends can go out and say, That's our camp over here. That's a great part of it. You had your secret areas, and you put up your board, and anybody who comes into your area who don't belong there, you come over and they're in trouble. That's a great part of it, man. That's wicked. We used to go on tours. So, you'd walk, you go on tour. We'd walk through the Beauvoir, and we'd just be basically hunted, do you know what I mean? And then you might think to a fight. I moved into my workshop in 89. It was derelict. A dark place. Like anything could happen. We were age 11. The smaller groups, the better. Too many people, and your secret got out. It's, it's not a secret anymore, it's got bigger. <laughs> we had sort of territory, and you'd have to obviously defend it. You'd have Oxton, then Murray Grove. Two separate little firms, two sort of gangs. Oxton gang, Murray Grove gang. All mates, really. Then that area's been exploded. It's not, your secret area's gone. It's gone. It's your privacy, you know, and it's gone. And then suddenly one summer, was it 96? Whenever Glass House doubled the rents, that summer, it was like the art colleges had spewed all their students out all over the square. And then it was Packington, which like, I mean, there's been history of fighting between Packington and Oxford. I mean, I'm sure it's still going on now. I mean, it was like our history. You know, we had to go and do it. It's unique where it is. The uniqueness is where it is. Because not a lot of people know about it. It'd just be you free and you'd be more away from everybody else. A lot of those areas ain't there no more. I don't even know if they still do that kind of play. Well, that feeling was just, it was a safe place. It was like safer than being outside because like, when you're outside, there was like, all police, like, you, get, you know, they've got that asphalt thing down and that, that, that just started. But like a little while ago, all they'll do is just come past and keep on picking you up. And, you know what I'm saying? So Janet just said, yeah, if you bring like your friends around, and coming there, then we'll be safe, you know what I'm saying? So, we just all went there. When I'm bored, there's nothing to do, so I go there, instead of worrying about the sheep and making trouble with it. Like, they went all the towers, they take some trips. You do anything in that crib, you're free. Due to the fact of the high crime in the Shoreditch area, they decided to set up a youth inclusion project. We were allocated the space by the Hackney Youth Service, the, um, the Pitfield Street building, and we were there for four years. Oh, nearly four years. <clears throat> nearly. But when they closed it down, just to build some houses, like for some rich people, like, it felt like they just tucked us out, it felt like rubbish. Just for the camera, the people that, what's the word, fund us took the building away. Because by rights, they should have consulted the young people to find out what they would like to happen to that building. Right? The majority of young people would not have turned around and said, we would like to see the building turned into luxury apartments. <laughs> because luxury apartments are not in anyone's price range that lives in the area. They ain't going to be able to sell them flats anyway. The young people were petitioning for that building, not to sell the project, please don't get us out of our building, please do this, please do that. They fought for that building. In fact, the only thing they never done was disgrace shortage regeneration. And the reasons why we never done that, right, was because of the fact, we do that, they cut the funding. So when the funding ran out, that's when they signed the thing to get, to get me out of there. Some, some people who never went to the crib, they're in prison now, basically. You know what I'm saying? So I reckon if I never went to the crib, I could have ended up going like, like a totally different way because where I was heading before, it's not a good place. So I'm saying, Oxen ain't really a nice place, but when Jack and Carleen came, they kind of put everyone together. You know what I'm saying? Where before, everyone was just scattered all over the place. So they just kind of put like, the peace back into it, you know what I'm saying? But if, yeah, they, if the crib was open and they didn't knock it down for all the rich people, then none of this, none of this, none of this crime that's happening in Hoxton will be happening right about now. Do you know what one of the young people said to me? He said, Janet, the city is coming closer. They're trying to drive us out. And that young boy is now in prison doing five years. And he's on crack at the age of 15. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? They don't realise that what they're doing in that area with all them posh places and shrinking up the people, then, it's distressing the young people. 
I remember someone said, hey, we're going to the ditch. I was like, the ditch? No one calls it the ditch. Developments like a river. Comes up against a sink school or a council estate, then you have to find a way around. Or through. And then people started using the word Oxton, which no one had ever heard about before. Or if they had, it was a place where the cranes were born, or a place where women ate bricks, or, you know what I mean? Sort of urban East End mythology sort of gangster type people. Obviously, being a regeneration area helps. And you'll always find, even at Hackney Council, people with a bit of spark. Let's say we've got an eye on the future. No need to stay on 50k when you can make it in the real world. There's a lot of change now. So a lot of the places you complain ain't there no more. Their plane is taken away. If everybody needs to give a photograph, please come over to this door. They will do a great connection to come with me for two. Down, mate. What? Wait! Wait! Oh, for God's sake! 
Yeah, just right. Just stand all in my way. Could you? Could you sort it? Your... Have you got a badge? Uh, out you go, number one. Upstairs. Right. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> That's where we're going. We're going about Jamie Oliver's <laughs> famous <laughs> restaurant. It's a, it's a shining example of what public private partnership <laughs> And it's um, it's just a stone scroll. So um, please just enjoy the, the unique ambience of this warehouse offer. Please, this week. Oh, yeah, that's right. This geezer, this Abbey geezer, he's giving it about, I'll pay you to buy the place, make it over, stay here rent free for a year. <laughs> now, I know Abbey's some cunt on the mate, but I'm thinking he'd take it. Because he'll have bit me in three months anyway, why not? So I said to him, all right, this morning, we haven't had a chance to be in small print. Before you know it, she's hitting me, the kids are crying. Bloody mate, I mean, he's on tell me. Tell her to let the rent check, middle of next week, and she needs to send an electrician now. That's all you got to say. Come on. Hello? Yeah, tell her I need to buy the place and all. Mm. No, I ain't moving to Umberside, neither. That's the latest one. Okay, you know, young woman, you're not going to be able to find it. If you move to Alt, like, oh, I ain't possible from kids like you do, you know. Like this. Where's that old metal? He says, I'll get the room with three oysters, pass. I mean, we've got friends, family. Why should we move where we don't want to go? Hey, you tell him it's illegal they moved us in here and all. Yes, oh, sir. No, you tell him, go on. <laughs> do the wife. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. It's talking too loud. Tell him it's illegal. <laughs> Say again? Oh, she's like the wife. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you Am I what? Give me that phone. <laughs> no, I am bloody not! <laughs> <laughs> Victorian lower door came down from 70 feet. Didn't even shout a warning. Oh, yeah. Well, he might shout it in Romanian. Plus, it's in English. Not much bloody use to me, is it? It took me that old right, mate, really. It's cracking jokes, apparently, to the pass out. Guess who went to hospital? He said, I fell down the stairs carrying a door. Yeah, well, it was that contract made Prospero Creations, wasn't it? The old job would have shut down. Uh, you, you can't get a job on a site now unless you speak Polish or as Betty Stoney. It, 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 they're worth what I told those people. It's only a labour in charge of them. They've got a sort of tier system, but none of them have got fuck all. Some of these guys, they're even paying for the job. Paying to work. <laughs> no, I'm out of demolition now. I'm going to lay pipes when I get to work with. Well, it's just as dangerous. The sides of the trench cave in on you, but at least it's all Irish and English. You know, not so many Romanians know how to lay pipes. You know. But, how come? Health and safety, didn't ask to speak to the Romanian Labour. I'll tell you. Because the governor meets the official at the door. All right? Fancy a pint? Gizra ain't even, need, ain't even come onto the site, and the government's give it a clean bill of health. It's a scam. Bloody scam. Is that my door? Mm. Do us a favour, love. Go and check with you. Yeah, oh, well, if it's Julie, the password's sorry. <laughs> oh, no, I know mum and her wife is upset. I'm glad she moved away. Fuck off, Jim. It ain't my dad. Shit. Yeah, I'll take Hammer to the bastard if he did show up. Where are all the dads, eh? Where's all these baby fathers or whatever they're supposed to be called? No, I mean, it's my right family area, this, Oxy. Yeah, you used to call it the village. Got sort of village mentality, you know. We're all inbred. <laughs> it's geezer down there, he's his own dad. Mr. Jim? Who's asking? Kadir, electric. Uh, you need power, yes? Well, that was great, you're having a council. No, no, I live Taliban Tower. Taliban Tower, that's what my kids call it. A very nice view, yes. <laughs> now, no power, yes? 
Birisi cancel job, bir tam ki. Ah, my friend from Kaliban, he sent me. Now you don't pay. Uh, I think you talked to man in pub last night called Adi. Oh, well, Adi's paying. <laughs> All right. I mean, I ain't sorry nothing. <laughs> Where's your box? Over there. Mr. Jim, this is serious. You're very lucky man, I come. Yeah, all right, Johnny. No, no, Kadir. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, your circuit is gone. The energy is cut. Who cut cable? No one. Look, I ain't been funny, but you are the real thing, ain't you? So I don't want to fucking lose wires in there, I've got kids. I too. So you family, me family. Mm. Now, uh, Mr. Jim, your children, how old are they? Do they come in here? <laughs> no. My kids know how to behave. Maybe mice. Maybe. Mr. Jim, maybe I do cover for your plugs. And when you go to pub, you tell your friend, huh? Kadir, good electrician. Please. I don't go to the pub, not usually. You find me three jobs, uh, I do your safety covers for free, yeah? Well, well let's get this working first. Hey, Alma! Listen, mate, I'll be back in five minutes. Let me get this working. Put the kettle on, we'll have a cup of tea. This tea bag tea. <laughs> in Turkey, we give it to somebody we don't like. <laughs> and they must put in milk to hide bad taste. But this Jim, I heard he has mother. She ran the community center. So I think for the big business is coming. <laughs> so maybe next year uh, I move to Haringey, Anfield. A nice little house, garden. I invite my family. I was just a boy when electricity came to my town, uh, because it's across the mountain, my town. Uh, it's hard to reach. I remember, I see the light bulb, and I think it's magic. Yeah, of course it's not magic, it's connection. Uh, maybe kind of magic. Now, every circuit has door for energy. Little door, it stops big power and divides it up. Uh, if you just cut, it burns you up. Because the uh, problem here, this problem here as well. It's like blood to heart. It must go back to where it comes from. Now, where I come from in the East, it's difficult. They say you terrorist, if not with government. All I do is give out leaflets about uh, torture in prison, uh, the electric shocks. So uh, after prison, I set up shop in Erzurum. Uh, electrical sales, repairs, that kind of thing. But people, they talk behind back. But they must come to my shop, uh, because my shop is good. So they say he learned his lesson now. And then the white cars start again. It's always the white cars. Everybody knows. Secret police. They know. I know they are watching me, and all the town watch it too, the dance of the cars. Then the raid come, they raid my house, my shop. The neighbors are staring.
she was a wild one. But they were so peppermint. They were lovely. Oh, my God, right, Duchess. Thank you, Mum. It's Duchess, Mum. It's Grand Duchess. You're the only Duchess now. You're the Grand Duchess. Thank you, Grand Dashing away with a smoothie eye. Dashing away with a smoothie eye. She stole my heart away. In my dream. I'm in a room. Little wires, big cables. They are hanging from the ceiling, wrapped around the walls. So I think I must sort this out. It's my job. I try to reach the cable, but they burn and stick to my finger. So now I am the power, and my fingers sizzle in the dark. The floor is full of little light bulbs. So I have to stand so lightly not to break them. And the light bulbs are flashing on and off. But everywhere the air is so sticky. Uh, coming through the walls, the window. I say, you will never make electricity with this sticky thing. And I cannot see anything except my hands burning. And the cables around me are growing like a forest. I see a crack of light through the window. I say, yes, there is light. You will do it. But behind the window, there is nothing. Come with me now. It's dangerous here. Make sign, storm electric. All right, all right. First things first, you guys have a tunnel, you know, the tunnel. No? All right, if you get a three knife off us, just around the corner there, don't take some air street. Get off of the tunnel, and you've got to produce things like a permit, um, some type of insurance, some photo ID, um, any papers that you've got, like um, a, a passport. A passport would be good, that's photo ID. You've got a passport? That's all right. Let me, um, let me break it down. What it is, the market, it used to be a good way to get started. But they've changed it all now. You've got to go down to town with your passport. And your uh, listen, maybe one of my friends here has passport. Sorry? Look, sorry, mate. Not to be rude, but we're not like that, Randy. You're not one of those funny undercover market traders. No, no, are you? it's okay. We're legit. Uh, I, I know, buddy. Uh, right. Maybe I'll come later when I have passport. Well, will you do that then? Okay, now uh, you watch television. I see you, mate. All right, good luck, mate. Right. So, all right, what we've got here is two comments for the residents. Some from Oxford Street, some from Oxford Square. We're talking about how they feel how the area's changed. Because, you know, we've got the whole Hobson Street to Oxford Square thing going on. We've going on for a little while. So, have a look. Tell me what you think. Whatever takes your fancy. Remember, all of our goods have got a two-year warranty. All right? Is that good for you? All right, then. Two-year warranty. Have I seen you? Do you warranty? I feel like I've seen you somewhere. Do you know I know you? Do you live around this area? Oh, you look very, very familiar. You don't, you don't often put that boy in my life, you? You know that boy that dad is doing to the bank? You, you don't put that boy in my life. 
Uh, with the trees on? Okay, people should like today. They say you jumped, you fell, or you've taken a bit of drugs. I'm not too sure. I mean, he used to look after me kids for me sometimes. I've got three little kids. But for £50 to see your dreams come true, it's not a lot to ask for, is it? What's on it? What's on it? Yeah. Whatever you want. What other market are you going to go to and someone's going to say to you, here's your dream? That's true, though. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. All those other markets. I mean, you have a lot of negative stuff about him, but it's, it's all good, seriously. I mean, people talk about me, but I'm a nice person. What can I say, you know? Get some of these things. I thought you was cuddling with him. You just really look familiar. And you as well, seriously. You really look familiar. <laughs> We've got a Del Boy here. Yeah. We've definitely got a Del Boy here. Well, you talk to me sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what's your dream? My dream? Yeah, what's your dream? Um, basically, to be happy, fulfilled. To be happy, to be yeah, fulfilled. Not, nothing. I'm not greedy. No, it doesn't sound like you're greedy, darling. Right? No, I think I might just have that. Excuse me, young man, what are you up to? You're always in the middle of a sale, but you never make one, do you? Of course I do. I was just about to bring your prices Look, there. she was interested. <laughs> Where well, are you not interested? No, I was listening. Yeah. yeah. I was going to buy. I was, I was Look, I need to go this somewhere else where you're not, you where you're not going to get in my business. I need to go somewhere else. Get out of here. <laughs> Good old man. Okay. Tell me if I'm going too fast and if not, let's um, keep it in the morning. All right, Pam, if you've got some time later, I'll pass by. Yeah. yeah. And do you come to that meeting? I'll try. Yeah, don't try. Be there. All right, I'll be there. All right, No, man, but I want to see you, though. I love you, innit? It's like every time I close my eyes, all I can see is you. Man, I ain't going to leave until I get you, you know? <laughs> Come wave me, man. Where? South End, innit? <laughs> yeah, man, the water's the blue like crystal. Yeah, the sun's always shining. And there's pineapple and orange trees in South End. I feel like living in a little house on top of a beach. We grow all together forever. You feeling me, yeah? Man, we can have like seven children and that. You know what, yeah, I'm in love, man. I'm, I'm feeling it right now. Then come away with me to South End, then. Yes, you can. Just get your stuff and come, in it. What are you doing here? Johnny, in, in. And you, out. You, out. You're not welcome here. Who's this woman chatting to? Well, I know you don't. Yeah, yeah, chat, chat, chat. That's all you do, isn't it? Where do you think it's going to take you? South End, innit? South End, my arse. And what are you going to do for work here, South End? Right, work. W O R. Yeah, I'm gonna work in a flower shop in South End. Oh, yeah. Yeah, people like you, yeah? Man, people like you. No, I'm gonna say it, man. What, you got five or ten years more left? You get me? Me and Julie, we're gonna have a kid every year. Oh, yeah, love your mum. Yeah. I'm gonna chuck your right there. You stop me from seeing him for so long. Come on, I'll stop you seeing him Look, now. you can't. I'm going to go with him. No, 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 you come here. You're you come in with him. Me. You will come back here, young lady. Let's go. <laughs> Are you just gonna let her ruin her life? 
I want you to do something. That girl's never gone to South End. She's never been near the sea. And I bet he hasn't known her. Come here, I'll show you something. That boy has been littering up this estate, the Isle of Arden, with messages to him. Sentimental crap. Do us a favour. Go round there, pick up all this litter. <laughs> Darling, what I'd like you to do is go round the corner, go round the side of Caliban Tower, and I'll catch you up. And if you find any more, say them for us, okay? Okay, I'll catch you up. Round the side of Caliban. You are my angel, crap. Alright. Come with me. What was it like in the beginning, right? You used to send me a love note every single day. It's so romantic. Whenever you live around there, local. Life, yeah. Life is full of questions, and everyone's got the fucking answers, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You got friends. Ain't got no one no more, man. It's because you let them down. Yeah. Seriously, just fuck off! What the fuck is wrong with you? Sort his head out. Come on. I'll be around the corner. For fuck's sake, get up, please. Come on. See, they took my home away from me, yeah? They took my fucking shit away from me, man. But it's, it's gone now when you're with me. Remember Southend? <laughs> Mama, my girl wants to make me laugh, you know. Southend, yeah? What, 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 you, what, you got the money for Southend? You got the money for South Ends, yeah? Where's the money? I haven't got anything. Oh, what, is the money in there? Is the money in here? Mind, Shall I check this in here, yeah? Don't. I'm gonna check this. There ain't no money in there, man. There ain't no money at all in there, man. Let's go. No, you know what, yeah? It's like when I first saw you, yeah? Shut up, man! Listen, I'm fucking you right now, man. Don't fuck about with me, man. Don't Just fuck about with me, man. Just fuck out with me! Come here, man. Ow! 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 What are you doing? What's wrong with you? Sort yourself out! Judy, go. Just go. Take your friends with you. Get lost. You need to sort yourself out. Didn't I tell you to go? Can you leave, please? Come on, let's go. I suppose it's all forgotten in the end, anyhow. But you do these things because people need it. And do you know what that feels like? When Julie was still around, I had so much on the plate I couldn't catch breath. But since most funeral, I... Well, I didn't go to the funeral, of course. I just watched it with Jim from his window. I saw her crying there. No flowers, just pictures. All these photos on the card. Because apparently Mo was into his photos. Came out of some workshop they done at the crib. Funnily enough, she gave me this photo. You know, still there by my bed. <laughs> yeah. The last two weeks it's been like I keep forgetting things. 
I just want a bit of peace. Not everyone pound, pound, pound. Now think what the hell would they do if it was my funeral? Listen, everything we've done here, we've done ourselves. This gazebo, garden, planting the flowers in, the kiddies' playground. Who needs the council? Got a meeting in a minute. Was I too hard on the boy? It's going down the pit, Mum. <laughs> My Jim went to a youth club there long before it was called the crib. And my oldest brother, Sid, went to school there. Look at this statement. He had a lovely send-off, did Sid. I've done him proud. <laughs> he lived a long enough life to warrant it. And there was no one else left. We know it lived over there, beyond the creek. Grondorf Street. Two rooms. I suppose they called it a slum. But I loved it as a kid in and out each other's rooms. Someone always had a fire going. When we moved to the 11th floor, it was less social or something. I suppose when you're a kid, it's all about that family feeling. It's always been that bad that for me, hasn't it? Well, I haven't run away. If she changes her mind, I ain't going nowhere. from you? When I find out where you are, I'll promise I'll write. I'll send you that photo. Speak to the right. That's it. All right? Come on, Mo. Let's go back to the crib. I want to get my own right now. I see you uh, with boy Redfoot shouting. I think I must come and help, but the boy run. Yeah, well that boy passed away. Passed away? Die. Ah, die. So it was the drugs, you see. So I suppose we all gotta find a way to see the stars. I come and make light for you. I come with you now. You're with a spark. That's right. I've forgotten all about you. Believe it or not, the first power station that burnt rubbish to make energy was here in Hoxton. Lit up the other shortage. Go down to Hoxton Square, right? Now, it's 15 minutes if you dawdle, 10 minutes if you pick your feet up. When you get to a little greenhouse, you're the green group, right? I want you to have a look round that greenhouse, take a photo of what needs doing that, dear. Have a chat to the group and decide what you want to take a photo of. The other team, you are my team, okay? Follow the map, take pictures, no more than five pictures. Okay, I'll see you on the other end. My name is Rodney Weeks. Rodney Weeks, ever heard of me? Uh, Anybody ever heard of Rodney Weeks? Right now. I'm very famous around these parts. You must have heard of me. Let's walk and talk, people. Let's walk and talk. I mean, this is my this is my manner. I'm Lord of the Manor around here. Oh, yeah. That, basically, that's what it is. I'm the ghetto tour guy. Oh. I mean, I can give you whatever you want. Whatever you want. You know, the kids love me. The kids love me. I did not wait for that. You don't wait. That's all for me. It's all for me. <laughs> give me some attention, people. Okay? That's a greenhouse. Yes, a lovely, a lovely greenhouse. I love the green house. People, keep your eyes on the road, keep your eyes on the road. A green car as well, as luck may have it. You know what I mean? 
Oh, the lady can't use the camera? I don't know camera. Oh, who gave you the camera then? Who gave you the camera? Come on, people, let's walk and talk. We don't want to be stalked, let's walk and talk. Yeah, we don't want to be stalked, so let's walk and talk. I mean, if you don't listen to Rodney Winks, you might get in trouble. Rodney Winks will give you whatever you seek, people. Whatever you seek. I'm the chosen one, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm the one, I'm the one who walks people down these streets. I, I told you, a bit of muscle, lady. A bit of muscle if you need a bit of muscle. You know what I mean? Beefy up, you know what I mean? I don't want you to catch a mad cow disease, if you get what I mean. <laughs> Beat me up, mad cow, you get me? Oh, you feeling me, baby? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, let me talk to the people in the back, they're a bit boring. I need to, I need to. Hi, people. Let's talk to the people. You've got the running mix experience. It's a wonderful one, if you follow the right. You know what I mean? Don't, don't be slow, folks. It's not like that. You know what I mean? Running mix is trying to take you where you need to go. And I'm trying, I'm trying to make sure that it's safe. It's safe. Watch for the roads, watch for the roads. The buses, you know, I've told the bus man that I'll be passing around here with you people today. No. As you're passing through, just cast your eye on that, show it to the next person, please. I'm actually in partnership with the guys who redeveloped this place. This is like um, their first school replacement project. The second one is in Pitfield Street. And um, although it's a pile of rubble at the moment, very soon it will become new apartments for key workers and a new doctor's surgery. <laughs> so, um, we'll be going upstairs to meet Raquel Pearl. Now, before we go, we're using the lift. Now, does anybody have a problem with the lift at all? You do. Please, if anybody has a problem, just wait for me to come back downstairs. We're going to go up in relays in sixes or sevens. I'll take you up in the lift, and then I'll come and collect the people that have any problems with the lift. We'll go up by the stairs. So, please, the first six or seven with me, please. Max and Max. <laughs> oh, well, um, I didn't need to, um, I didn't need to. The, the guests are here to meet, to meet the eyes. Where's, where's Raquel? Raquel is in shock. Ow. I am no longer collecting her work. She's a smackhead loser, laddie. This exhibition will be her last. Oh, uh, uh, well, did you get my message about the hops walking? Mm. Seems that we're in business. Yeah, we'll, we'll be in business together. <laughs> oh, 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 I don't know about that, Eddie. Oh, come on, Max, man, we made a deal. Oh, you are in public life, and You don't make deals. Ah, oh, yeah. Unfortunately, um, Raquel Poe can't be with us today, so um, please, please enjoy her installation, and if you have any any questions, uh, I may be able to help. Um, we're friends. Can you tell us what it means, please? Well, um... Yes, it's a very interesting piece. So, I mean, how, how do you feel about the work? <laughs> <laughs> Shit! What? Why not rubbish? This is junk! What are you looking at? Who pays for this crap? That's genius, that's genius. What? Go... No, 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 it's wonderful, really. <laughs> What's going on here? No, no. What are you on about? No, 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 you, 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 you're part of the work, aren't you? It's, a, it's very clever, man. So, what are you trying to say? No, no, it's, 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 it's just the emotional layering. It's, um, um, it makes me see the work in a whole new different light. It's, it's beautiful, it's really good. <laughs> Can I help you? Are you looking for something else in the building? No, I just wandered in. You think you're better than me, innit? Because of what? Because of what I dress? Do I talk? You're looking at me like I'm rubbish? No, 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 don't worry, it's just, it's just part of the work. It's just part of the work. He's a, a hoxton. I don't want to know! I'm better you, right? I'm better you! <laughs> I think um, I think we should give him a round of applause. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I think we should go back downstairs by the stairs. Um, just give me a moment. <laughs> Let's go back downstairs. Thank you. Please, please this way. Yes, it's okay. <laughs> You should go first. Okay. 
well. In Shoreditch's case, they got a kickstart from the Dawson City Challenge. <laughs> it's really lucky because <laughs> we're not even in Dawson. <laughs> I wonder what Dawson felt about that. <laughs> anyway, um, some of that money went to um, the glass house. Those buildings over there, those are glass house buildings. And as you can tell, they've gone from strength to strength. You know what I mean? More recently, £59 million pounds of NDC money has gone into the area through Shoreditch Trust, which is a, a unique partnership between the community and consultants. I mean, the beautiful building we were just in, for example, was part bought and developed by them. I'm delighted to see the area becoming more middle class. Mm. Because Hoxton was a hotbed for, for racism and poverty. Those estates had to be broken up and were slowly achieving that through a mixture of um, privatisation, demolitions and building new apartments for, you know, disadvantaged professional groups such as students and key workers. <laughs> I think anybody who exerted their right to buy is very happy with the developments going on here. I know I am. We're slowly overcoming the politics of envy. <laughs> So, um, why don't we go and have a drink and sample some of that um, quintessential Hoxton mix of fruit and glam. Mm -hmm. Let's go over to Blue Poetry, please follow me. Please. 
I'll just beat the Mac Cross I'll show you happy to hear what he has to say. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'm Max Ross Brolin. I always tell people that I'm in the dream industry. Yeah. And he tells me they can get to look at cultural regeneration in Hoxton. Now, I'm an artist of a new kind. Yeah. In the brave new world of Prospero Creations is a free world. You know, a world of the imagination, unhindered by bureaucratic constraints. We're helping the public sector become more flexible, dynamic. And we are certainly keen to develop international partnerships. So, let's take Hoxton Hall, and we hope to. <laughs> Now the theater stage there is listed, so your average developer wouldn't touch it. But since it lost its funding, it's become a little more than a delicate community center. Its natural dignity and stature are being denied. So as I wandered around Boston Hall, in the mirror, I saw a vision. An exclusive burlesque club called Prosperous. Bringing together the best of the past and the present, somewhere where I could take my clients and you could take your clients there too. Um, I can give you more information back at the Holiday Inn. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the burlesque club is where the dream starts. Historic luxury flats and new built key worker housing will enable a good commercial return and now support the purchase and development of the heritage site. Um, it's another sustainable enterprise for Hoxton to see. <laughs> The dream is moving up Hoxton Street. And I listen to my dreams. That's all I do. It works. It's magic. <laughs> I'm sure Max will be happy to answer any questions you might have. <laughs> Mad Max the Magic Man. Yeah! Hey! <laughs> I met this guy. You're a relic. You are rubble. The yours is the plague of Pitfield Street. There's a storm coming, Max. A big electric storm. You're going to get um, you're, you're going to get your fingers burned. You're going to fall, Max. You're, you're demolishing yourself. You're going to fall, but the government can't catch you anymore, and you'll be dragging them with you, and they'll be falling to the You're going to get your fingers burned. <laughs> you have done this to yourself, Raquel, because you don't know when to stop. Take it back! I think we should find somewhere else to go. Yeah! Let's go somewhere else! I'm fucking hate this place. Come on, no, no, let's go no, no, back. No, 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 Why don't you go home and, and lie down and relax? Please, please, Raquel, please, 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 please,
Thank you.